Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 107. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we're Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 225 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. You look mighty tan today. I am making sure that I am showing off as much as possible while the tan lasts, because <laughs> as you know, I do not have a usual like long lifespan for tans. You know, it's funny. We talk about what has changed with us like on keto other than just losing weight. And that is something that has changed for you because you have stopped wearing sunscreen. Yes. Now, I know before you go putting a bunch of hate comments down there, sunscreen has lots of chemicals. We do other things like cover up with clothes or right. something like that. And the bottom line is you get a lot of vitamin D from the sun. So the sun's really not as bad as most people think it is. I think personally, it's the chemicals in the sunscreen. Another topic, but you used to burn constantly wearing sunscreen. Always, I, I especially in my face. Right. And that is whether I was wearing a hat or not. Right. So it's very interesting that my nose and my cheeks, which are protruding pretty far out, I guess, um, don't get burnt like they used to. And my arms and chest, like I may burn a little bit, but then it turns to a tan for a while. And whereas it used to just be red, peel, Plain. Yeah, when now you're just Ghost like white. tanning up. So that's definitely something that we did not expect from keto. But no. Yeah, you are like looking nice and tan. Nice. So this past week, we actually got the pleasure of spending three days down in the Keys. It was awesome. It was awesome. We learned how to paddle board. I'm a paddle boarder. You're a paddle boarder. I do that sometimes, <laughs> paddle boarding. We had a blast. We got to have some stone crabs. Even I ate stone crabs. We had some fresh yellowfin tuna and uh, put it right on the Blackstone. Five minutes, some fresh Florida Gulf Coast shrimp. It was amazing. We had a great time, but it kind of brings up something because you learned how to paddleboard. I did. And we went down there and you were terrified to paddleboard. You're like, this was the, you, you really, she looked at me and said, Joe, of all the purchases you have ever made, this is the dumbest one you've ever made. I am so uncoordinated. I'm never going to be able to do this. And I was able to do it because that's <laughs> the thing. Yeah, I, I had a belief system in my mind about what I was capable of participating in. And I truly thought that anything that required a high level of balance mm -hmm. and coordination, I just was not gonna be able to do it. I wouldn't have been able to do it years ago. And the older I get, the less likely that I'm going to be able to, to learn something new or do something new, but we had the money in it. Right. There's something <laughs> magical about money for me that it's like, well, I'm at least gonna try it right. because we've got the money in it. Right. So, you know, it's the same thing with the trailer. I think we always planned on getting out and taking some vacation time here and there, mm -hmm. but when we didn't have the money in it, right. we didn't actually- like, whatever, yeah, we'll get around to what it. What is it that scripture that says, wherever your treasure is, like that's where your heart will be? Well, right. our treasure is in that travel trailer and my treasure was in, you know, the uh, paddleboard. So that's where I was on there trying. Well, the thing is, is that you challenged yourself. Yeah. And while we were on the paddleboard, I actually issued Rachel another challenge. Cause the first day we got there, we went out and I was freaking out because if you don't know, I have several pins in my left ankle. And because of that, it's a 30 year old injury. I tend to put most of my weight on my right my right leg. And if you look at my calves, you will see that my right calf is like two to three times bigger than my left calf. I had some atrophy in my left calf. That ankle has a limited range of motion. And because I just can't balance, like most of my weight when I walk, 
when I'm standing, it's all on the left. So I was really worried about me balancing because you got to balance on a board right. equally on both feet. And I can't do that. I did teach myself how to balance out there, but it was rough. The second day we went out, it was much calmer and we were having a great time. Yeah. And, and as we're going in, I looked off in the distance, the tide was going down and I looked off in the distance and I'm like, I see an island over there where it looked like there were a couple of jet skiers out there. And I'm like, it doesn't look that far. So look I, far to me. I looked at Rachel and I said, I know we're going in and I know you want to eat and you're motivated by food. I'm always motivated by food. And I said to her, I challenge you to paddle all the way out to that island. I don't think it's that far. And you were like, uh, I don't know about this. Well, it was interesting because, yeah, it was very far away. We didn't know how far, though. And I was like, I, I don't know that I can do it. But here's the thing. Joe really was learning to balance. And I, I could on this paddleboard and I could see him who has like a greater obstacle than I had because like my my two legs are similar mm -hmm. and yours were different and you're still making it happen. So I think it was when you said, I think I can do this and I challenge you to do it that I was like, I got to at least give this a shot. Like mm -hmm. I got to try this. Now I did say to Joe, which was funny, we're going to be in some really deep water. Right. And Joe was like, here's the thing. We're on the surface of that water. So whether there's two feet underneath us or 20 feet underneath us, that doesn't really matter. If you just keep paddling and you're willing to stay on the surface of this, then I think that we can reach whatever distance we want to. Yeah, and it's very deceiving when you would look down the water because of the Gulf Coast water there and, and the keys and you're surrounded you don't know how deep it really is because of the way you're standing. I, at one point, I thought we were in like two feet of water and I jumped off and I could not touch the bottom. But we had like at one point, like a five foot wide, not long, wide um, manta ray, like yeah. just going underneath us. But anyway, we went out there and it was definitely like when you got there, you're like, I can't believe I did this. And it was an island that I think that is only exposed when the tide goes down. It was covered with, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of hermit crabs, like, like baby hermit crabs. Little tidal pools that mm -hmm. were just built into the surface of it. With reef fish. All kinds of reef fish, the anemones. I can yep. never say that correctly, but it was like little Finding Nemo vignettes all over this thing. And then you could look back in the distance and see the shoreline. And there was such a victory of like, we did this. Um, we can we can do big things. We can do new things. There wasn't an age limit on there. Right. And I was so glad that we didn't miss out on all of the cool stuff because be, we went to this island and we were able to actually hold some queen conks that weren't just like a souvenir gift shop. The conch was still In inside it. of it and we got to hold it, look at it. And I just, I felt like a rock star. Now, if you are curious, we didn't know again how far we were paddling out and I'm glad we didn't because I did realize when we got out there, I was wearing my watch, my Apple watch. So we decided to use the GPS to track going back. And yeah. it turned out that from where we started to that island was 1.8 miles. Now to the actual point of the beach, which is not where we started, was right. a mile and a quarter. And you can see in the distance, like it doesn't look that far, but it was over a mile. And we were doing that in the middle of the ocean. And the reason I bring this up is because every month, we like to put out a challenge. Right. And they, sometimes they're challenges, sometimes they're motivations. The bottom line is our channel is all about family. We try to be there to inspire you, to be the confidant that you need, to, to be just that friend who like you can turn to when you know, you're like in trouble or something like that. We're about a community. So every month, Rachel comes up with a 30 or 31 day monthly motivation. We put it on our Facebook, you put it on Instagram, and we also post it on our Facebook every day for those of you who don't have social media. And every month it's different. Sometimes it's make somebody laugh. Right. Well, this month we actually have two challenges. One yeah. was put out by Bronson, and it is the no joke challenge. And so this is just a challenge to help us build some lean muscle. It is not about 
losing fat. It's just about getting moving a little bit more, building some lean muscle, eating more protein, and seeing what happens at the end of 30 days. The other thing is, which Rachel just happened to be putting along at the same time as I was talking to Bronson about the challenge, is like a chopped challenge, right? right. And I'm gonna let you talk about this. Yeah, so uh, to go with the, the the goal of getting more protein in, I thought, well, let's have some different protein options. And really my motivation behind this was to find some inexpensive mm -hmm. things because Bronson has been so gracious to offer his services for free. Right. And I thought, well, I don't want to, you know, have protein that it's like lobster thermidor and and you need to because i don't like lobster well i mean that you have to be super rich in order to right. to participate in the challenge and something that's been was has been very interesting going into this is i don't think that we've ever received so many messages and emails to just let us know that someone is not going to participate in the challenge now i do want to say this you don't have to participate in no. this challenge or any challenge. It's not like you you can be like, well, if I don't participate in, you know, the chopped challenge, then I can't be like part of the 2K family. It has nothing to do with it. Yeah. This is just like a fun thing because it, we're all about challenging. Not ju not you guys, but just challenging ourselves. So right. we look at we are going to participate in challenges just as much as you guys are because when you challenge yourself, you're pushing yourself to do more to get better. It's like a mini goal. So don't think that you have to no. participate in any of our weekly, daily, or monthly challenges. Well, and well, and that's the thing. So normally, if I've got a, a you know a daily prompt that's like, let's say, hey you'll stress less if you forgive somebody. So the today's prompt is, you know, forgive someone. Mm -hmm. I never receive an email that says, you know what, you don't understand like what this person did to me and I am choosing not to forgive today. I am not participating in that. Usually what we do is, is if someone does participate, then they send us a message and, and say like, hey, I just wanted to let you know I participated in for that day and this is what happened and it was like a good result. But we're we're getting a lot of messages like, hey, yeah, your challenge, not doing it. And here's why. I don't like this protein. I'm not I'm not gonna move this way. Like I'm just I'm not participating and I need you to know. And I think it's interesting because it's like I'm not quite sure what my response is supposed to be. I'm certainly not going to have the response of like, well, you're not my friend anymore because right. that's just not me. And, but my response is also not going to be like, I'm sorry, like, okay, let's take it down. All right, let's stop this challenge because maybe there's somebody out there that's like, you know what? I'm like Rachel, I don't like chicken thighs and I'm going to go ahead and give it a try, right. you know? So I don't want to take something down and, and maybe there's somebody that's, that's going to give it a try and they've never pushed themselves in some way and, you know, and they're going to push themselves. So I think other people, even with the exercises, maybe they're going to give it a try and see mm -hmm. like, can I do this because I've been walking or I've started running or I joined a gym and I'd like to take it to the next level. I'm gonna attempt these things and like just enjoy the fact that this isn't costing me anything. Right. This is just like a free challenge and maybe I'll learn something new, you know, but maybe somebody will do an alternative also, which we're completely fine with. It's for me, it's like all a win. Yeah, I mean, just, just we want you to know you don't have to participate and you can right this month we actually have two challenges right we're doing the bronson no joke challenge as well as what are you calling this thing i call it the chop challenge but do we yeah. have a name for it yeah well i think a chop challenge, the is, chop challenge is good because yeah and it's not that like each protein is the only thing that you're no, eating no no for no today. It's, it's it's can you incorporate that protein somewhere in your meal you can still have vegetables you can still have keto chai you can still have protein shakes yeah. you can still have eggs it's can you incorporate that somewhere in your day but you can do one and not the other you can do them both or you can do neither but let me ask you this or let me present you with this what if what if you do the challenge and we have no way of knowing if you do it but no. what if you do it and find out at the end of the month oh my gosh i actually like doing russian twists or oh my gosh i actually like cube steak 
I can tell you this, we went to the Keys and anybody who's been watching our channel for any length of time knows, I do not like seafood. No. Here's the seafood I like. I will eat shrimp. And I will eat sushi, which is very weird that I will eat sushi, but I don't like any cooked fish because there's something about when you cook it and the smell and, and thoughts about when I was growing up. And like the only way you would ever get me to eat fish is fried fish, which obviously we don't eat on keto, like covered in batter. Right. So we went out and Rachel's like, we're in the Keys. And she was like, here's the thing. We're not going to eat unless we can catch fish. Well, that didn't last very long because we all we were doing was feeding the fish. We catching. weren't catching them. They were coming up and we could feed them, but we couldn't catch anything. We were fishing, but not catching. So I said, well, we're going to go get some fresh seafood because we're in the Keys and there's tons of fishing boats and everything else. And she's like, okay, we will do that, but you have to eat it. You have to eat it. So I wanted to treat her some stone crabs because it is in season right now. And that is a treat. For her, it's Truly. a treat for anybody, right? In fact, yeah. we're gonna bring some up to my mom. They're very expensive. And uh, so I got, she was like, well, you have to eat one. And she's like, you don't have to eat them all because I don't wanna waste them at the cost of these things. But then we got some fresh yellowfin tuna and I put it on the Blackstone. I put some just Cajun seasoning on there. And you know what? I liked it. So maybe, I've never had it before. So maybe you learn to like something new. I mean, yeah. when we first met, the thought of sashimi was like, no way. Oh my gosh, you wouldn't touch sushi. I wouldn't touch it. And so when you kind of challenged me to try it, now I love it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that's the only way that we're gonna grow sometimes is if someone challenges us in a certain area. Well, speaking of a challenge, last month, I guess it was, yeah, it's, we're still in March, so it was in February. Yeah. We put a challenge out that anybody who is willing to destroy their scale on camera and send it to us, right. we would send them a blender bottle. Yep. And we got a video. How fun is this? Are you ready to see this? Yes. So it is from Christopher Slap a Stick Keto, who also has a YouTube channel. I'm gonna link that down below. Him and his kids are awesome. Every Thursday you have keto kids cooking. It's incredible to watch it's them so great. You know, like cooking. But anyway, they had a little bit of fun with destroying their scale, and we wanted to share this video with you. Okay. Look at them whacking that thing. Like, is this the funnest like family activity? Can you imagine like how much fun Sawyer's having right now? Just being that is like, so awesome. We're beating this thing that normally we might get in trouble for, but like dad says this is cool. So like, let's just do it. I think they were very huh? successful at destroying that What'd scale. What'd we do? Break it pieces. Did we destroy a scale? Yeah. Was that fun? Yeah. yeah. So that scale is officially annihilated, and I bet that Sawyer was the only child in his class that like, what did you do this past weekend? Like, he had this story to tell. <laughs> that was awesome. I loved watching it. And I know we said we were going to send one blender bottle. But we actually have a few blender bottles left, the blue ones. Mm -hmm. And we're in the process of ordering some new ones. And if you're interested, right now they're only going to be for our Patreon members, but we will put them up available for sale later. It's going to take us about six weeks. And if you're interested in supporting us on Patreon, there is a link down below because Patreons now have a mascot. Right. And the mascot are called the Meatheads. The Meatheads. And uh, this is what the logo looks like. Our entire group like basically voted and picked on the Meatheads. We had this drawn up. So we're going to have that put onto a t-shirt as well as uh, put on a blender bottle. So because of that, we're going to kind of get rid of some of our blender bottles and we're going to send a blender bottle to both of them. We're going to give one to Christopher and one to Sawyer. I think that's only fair. And so we're going to send a bunch of those off. So guys, thank you so much for participating in that. It was so much fun to watch. Now I know we have to take a commercial break, but I did want to mention I almost completely forgot about this. In fact, I have to pull it up just uh -oh. to make sure I get it right. This week's Flavor of the Week at Keto Chow 
is cookies and cream for the normal 10% off. Yum. Which, here's what I like about the, you know, flavor of the week is that it brings to my mind, like, the other flavors. Because yeah. we have our special ones that we really like. Chocolate toffee. Chocolate toffee, chocolate peanut butter, pistachio. But you forget about some of the other ones. Because you get 10% off. It does not stack on top of our link, which is down below. But if you use that link down below, you will get 10% off your entire purchase. Right. But this week... They actually have some specials on some other flavors in the individual packets. Because yeah. the cheapest way to buy Keto Chow is Bags. when you buy the big bag. You pay $70 for the big bag. If you get the 10% off, it drops $10, $7 off that bag. But if you buy the individual packs, they're like four seventy five, dollars yeah. And then even at 10% off, you're you know getting, what, $4 and you know, 47 cents off. But this week, each flavor's got a different like sale. Cookies and cream, I've got it pulled up here because I didn't want to get it wrong. 21 individual packets. So if you need something for like on the road, like super, RVing. Super convenient. 21 individual packs, $63. So that's like you're getting into the same price of buying the big bag, but you can have the individual ones to like take on the road with you. for Only for cookies and cream. The other flavors are like 15%. Or it's good for sharing with a friend. Yeah. If, you're, if you've got somebody in your life that you're like, boy, make the switch. Like I would love to see you, you know, not be drinking Boost and try drinking Keto Chow. Also... We have our video for this, the April box. You don't want to miss that. What's coming out in the April box for this? That's coming up later on this week. This is actually the May box. You definitely want to get the May box. I'm not going to keep telling you this, but you want to get the May box. You have until April 15th at midnight to order it. You're going to be sorry if you don't order the May box. Our tax deadline. I really want to tell everybody. No, taxes got pushed to May. But the deadline for Keto Chow box is, is still April still 15th. April 15th. <laughs> okay, let's take a quick commercial break, and then we can come back with all our comments. So what are we having for lunch today? I haven't decided yet. We need to go to BJ's or Sam's Club because everything is frozen. Do you know what you're having for lunch today? That's what I want to know. Go ahead and leave it in the comments. So this is the part of Keto on the Couch where we like to celebrate our subscribers because Keto on the Couch is all about our subscribers. And we're going to read some comments. We have our subscriber of the week. But before we do that, we have our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. And this is somebody who put a post down in our Facebook group, something that just inspires you, keeps you motivated. And this week's is from Lori. Hey, Lori. Very simple. She said, nothing changes if nothing changes. That is so stinking true. It is simple, but elegant because yes. that is exactly right. Like if I don't do anything different, why am I expecting there to be something different? Right, so I love that post. Thank you so much, Lori. Now we have our comments. We're gonna start off with the comments from our YouTube channel from last week. And the first one is from Zoe. Hey Zoe. Said addressing the blowing the fat out of the water before hitting a protein goal. I'm having the same issue. In other words, she's having eating, like hitting all of her fat macros before she gets her protein goals. All right. She's like, I am doing heavy whipping cream in my coffee and I eat two times a day, but I do eat nuts and cheese and I'm not hitting my protein goal of 180. I'm hovering around 100 a day. Any advice? I would say, first of all, lead with your protein. Mm -hmm. Lead with your protein. Like, you know, if you're like, well, I've got to do, you know, I want heavy whipping cream in my coffee, then say like, I'm, I'm just going to have to go and drink black coffee until my protein catches up with my fat. Yeah, there's a few things you can do about it. And Bronson actually talked about it on our live stream this past week. And again, if you're doing the April challenge, it's going to start this week on April 1st. But Bronson will be with us on Wednesday, mm -hmm. March 31st to like kind of kick everything off. And he's going to be there to answer all your questions, 6 p.m. Eastern time. But there's a few things you can do. I love your thing of eat your protein first. If you want to eat some pro fats and you want to eat some carbohydrates, get your proteins in first. When you sit down to eat, eat the protein first. Um, if you do want to have your heavy whipping cream in your coffee, then you're going to have to make some of your meats a little bit leaner. Most meats are one-to-one, -one, and that it's just the bottom line. If you like a ribeye, eggs, things like that, those are all one-to-one. -one. So if you want to have fat from something else, like adding a little bit of butter, you're going to have to find some meats that aren't one-to-one. -one. So it kind of all balances out. If you eat a ribeye and that's one-to-one, -one, don't put a whole bunch of butter. You don't need a bunch of butter to cook with, but you'll have to balance somewhere that, you know, 
heavy whipping cream. So maybe eat some chicken breast instead of chicken thigh for one of the meals and then eat fattier meats for the other meals. Well, it's interesting though, if you connect a challenge to my coffee, it will get accomplished. Like if I know, hey, I can't have heavy whipping cream in my coffee tomorrow unless I meet my protein goal today, let me tell you, it will happen. You'll get it. I will make it happen. <laughs> Okay, next one is from Emily. Hey, Emily. She says, I live in an apartment. The neighbors will love the slam ball exercise, not LOL. I hope the slam ball can be modified to be a quiet exercise so I don't disturb the neighbors. Yeah, we take ours outside. Yeah, I'm using mine in the garage now. Now, I don't believe there are any slam ball exercises in Bronson's things. He said they're all pretty much body weight exercises of anything. If you can get yourself a cheap set of resistance bands, that will really help. I'll put a link for a couple down below from Amazon, uh, but the slam ball is not going to be one of the things. It is just a fun thing to kind of get your aggression out. You can take that ball, slam it down on the ground as hard as you can. You can do Russian twists with it. You know, some people have a stress thing that they squeeze. We're, we're like throwing things down the ground. It's kind of fun. But I love the fact that this challenge, both from the food perspective and from you know the workout perspective is designed to keep costs down. Yes. We don't have to spend a million dollars in order for us to get protein in or to do these exercises. Yes. Our next one is from Debbie. Hey Debbie, she says, I would rather stay on DST than staying on CST. <sighs> it allows me to go walking outside later when I get stuck with work stuff late in the day. So yeah, if you don't know, I'm not a big fan of daylight savings time. Right, me neither. Except <laughs> it messes for, with me. Well, except for what she's saying, which is if you go for a walk later in the day, it's really nice because yeah. the sun is still That's up true. and you still feel like you've got time to enjoy the rest of your evening. Right. Well, we do have another one. It's from At Home with Texas Girl. Hey there. She said, I'm not a fan of daylight savings time either. It's so annoying. Also, I'm a side sleever over here closest to the door. Oh, fun. I love hearing like all of the variations and reasoning for why people sleep on a certain in a, on a certain side of the bed and also how they sleep. Yeah, because last week we did ask like, how do you sleep? Are you sleeping on your stomach, on your back, on your side? Do you sleep curled up in a ball? Anything like that. So we have a few of those. Uh, next one is from Gail. Hey, Gail. She says, I am a stomach sleeper even when I was pregnant and I do a bit of side sleeping too. I wish I could sleep on my back. I just can't. I can't sleep on my back. I try. Rachel can do it. I don't know how she does it. I try and I try and I try to sleep on my back. And like I sleep on my side, but then my shoulder hurts. I, every morning I wake up with shoulder issues because I'm sleeping wrong. Or I would, I actually dangled my arm one night too much over the edge of the bed and oh, I like yeah. hyperextended my elbow. So now that's always hurting. So then I try to sleep on my stomach because my shoulder hurts and I've got to weird my arms like yeah, I'd love to sleep on my back. I just can't get used to it. You know, however you sleep, you know, just roll with it. Don't try to like change it. it. Yeah, just roll with it. You know, if you need five pillows in order to be comfortable, do that because I find that if I have a bad, you know, night's sleep because I'm trying to, you know, especially like if you have a sunburn or something, mm -hmm. you sleep weird. Like I did sleep more on my side as I was kind of like, you know, the first day after a sunburn because it felt like not great on my back. Um, the next day, if you don't sleep well, you are miserable, yeah. right? It affects your entire next day. That's the biggest thing that I struggle with is sleep. If I could just get more sleep, I know I would have a much better success when it came to like weight loss and things like that. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, next one is from Jennifer. Hey Jennifer. She said, I used to be a tummy sleeper before having kids. Now I'm a side sleeper until one side falls asleep and then I've got to switch the other sides. So that's exactly what I go through. My good friend is about 37 weeks pregnant right now and and she was talking about how like, wow, everything has changed during pregnancy and, and how she just can't get comfortable. She's ready for that baby to come. Is that where like the whole like propping the pillow and everything comes from? Because when oh, you yeah. sleep on your side, you gotta like prop it. I mean, I've never been pregnant. So I, I mean, I've looked like I was pregnant. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and you know, all of those different parts of your body, your leg, when you get used to and accustomed to sleeping, you know, where it hits on your leg and where it hits in your, your, your thigh, and then you know on your hips you just get used to that feeling mm -hmm. and, and it's really hard coming out of pregnancy to to go back to the way you used to sleep interesting 
Uh, next one is from Diane. Hey, Diane. She says, I have to sleep on my side, usually my right side. If I sleep on my left side, I get heartburn. I always sleep on the right side of the bed. I need to face the outside of the bed, and since I sleep mostly on my right side, that works best for me. Dane can sleep on either side and in any position except <laughs> on his stomach. Since his surgery, if he rolls onto his stomach, he has terrible oh, wow. reflux. That's very interesting. What about, like... You know how you've have like almost had atrophy on one side. Do, do your legs feel more comfortable on one side or the no, other? No, it's all about my shoulders and all the injuries from like I had dislocated this elbow. My biggest problem usually is like I want to sleep with a lot of pillows, but my neck does not want me to sleep with a lot of oh, pillows. Oh yeah, but I can't sleep with no pillow, so it's always like trying to find the perfect pillow. And I thought I had one. And somebody keeps stealing it from me because she's like, it feels really comfortable between my legs. Right. It does work. <laughs> it's like a gel one and it feels amazing. But I do have a, a, a specific pillow that I use that like has a gel area for your, your neck. Right. But even with that, there is a sweet spot in that pillow. And if I get off at all right because of maybe a dream or something and you're you know you roll a little bit the next day man your neck is just not right yeah uh next one is from sherry hey sherry Sherry said we lived outside of dc so that was always one of our field trips oh we asked about field oh, trips, field last trips. Week. she said in the fourth grade they planned trips to williamsburg jamestown so that was the most outstanding one that i could remember i think that that would be a great great area for like growing up and field trips because you have the Smithsonian and you have all of the different like basically national headquarters mm -hmm. for all kinds of places like the museum and I mean all kinds of things but yeah Williamsburg and Jamestown were some of my favorite trips that I took when I was living in Washington DC because I love history and I, I love period piece movies even. So there's so much beautiful things to look at when you, you're you looking at different, you know, rooms of maybe like Mount Vernon. If right. you go and visit George Washington's house. I mean, there is just so much cool stuff there. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Melissa. Hey, Melissa. She says, our field trips in elementary was to the Houston Zoo. That's cool. I love zoos. <laughs> What's your favorite animal? Oh, rhino. Really? Yeah. I always go straight to the lions too. Recently, we went to Bush Gardens with work and I got the closest I've ever gotten to a lion. I'll have to share the picture with you because it was amazing. Usually the lions are always someplace else. Right. And you're like, I think I see a lion up there on Pride Rock, but this one was really close. Next one is from Pammy. Hey, Pammy. She says, uh, my most used appliance is my food scale. I track everything so it's used many times a day. You know, I didn't even think about that as an appliance, but yeah, and I think that is a great uh, you know, appliance to be using because when you're first getting started it's not even about counting calories but especially when we're looking at how much protein and how much fat right it's very deceiving so you know you can look down and be like i don't know how much this like i know what a pound of ground beef looks like right now yeah but at first not I at didn't, first you know so i would look at that package like ah eh, that looks like enough and it's like oh that's like two and a half pounds of ground beef there. What does 150 grams of something look like? It right. is very, very challenging. It's kind of like when we would go and pack the, like go to the airport and there would be like, well, your bag is two pounds over. Well, what, what does a two pounds of shoes look like? I don't know what that looks oh like. Oh my gosh. That reminds me of a couple years ago, right? We went to, um, to the keto convention, right? Mm -hmm. The keto con. And we came home with so much stuff. I mean, so much stuff that we actually had to go to the post office and put Mail three some. boxes of stuff to send home with us. And then we get there and we, you know, they have the little scale there and we put our bag on the scale and one bag is like 55 pounds. It's a limit of 50 pounds. The other bag was like, 44 pounds. So we're right. like, okay, let's, and we're sitting in there in the airport and we're moving everything. All the bags open in the middle of the airport. So that it's even. And moving it over. And we go up to the counter and a lady goes, go ahead and put your bag on. So I put the bag on. She's like, is that the only one? I'm like, no, we have two. She's like, put them both on. I'm like, okay. And she was like, okay, you're good. And I'm like, wait a second. It, it didn't matter. And she's like, oh, no, no, no. She's like, it, it goes by reservation. So you could have had one bag that weighed 80 pounds and one bag that weighed 30 pounds. I would like that I'm 30 like, minutes back. I know, right? Like, And then you, you're sweating in the airport because you feel like everybody is staring at you. And, and everyone in the airport just saw all of my underwear. <laughs> all of it. 
Let's take another commercial break and then we can come back with the Facebook comments. What is the best April Fool's prank you've ever played on someone? I don't know. I have played the I'm pregnant prank on a friend. I don't think that's going to work anymore. Yeah, no one is believing that anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I have done that. Okay, let's get into our Facebook comments. And again, if you are not a member of our Facebook group, go ahead and join. It's completely free. There are some awesome people in there. And also we have a Discord channel. There's a link for that down below. So if you just want somebody immediately to chat with, it's kind of like those old live AOL chat rooms, right? right? There's almost always somebody in there. And while I'm thinking about it, make sure if you have not done this yet, I don't know why you haven't done this, but go hit the like button on this video. If you're watching us during the live chat, just exit out of the chat and go hit the like button. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit that bell button so that you're notified every time Rachel comes on and says balls. Balls. <laughs> okay, let's get into the Facebook comments. So the first one is from Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Leslie said, so I was panicking a bit this morning because I've gained three pounds since I've upped my protein and my calories. Then I put on a pair of pants that were a little tight three pounds ago, and now they're a little loose. I feel better now. Same for me. Like that it is. It's so weird to wrap your mind around the fact that you may go up in weight, but you are going to go down in size, but you're sculpting your body. It's all about body composition. And here's what I'm going to challenge you guys to do. If you're partaking in the April no joke challenge, stay off the scale. Stay off the scale. For the next 30 days. Do what us I a want favor. you to do is on April 1st or on March 31st, I want you to take a bunch of measurements. You can get on the scale on March 31st, but take a bunch of measurements. Take a bunch of pictures. Then at the end of every week, don't get on the scale. Nope. Get on and take a bunch of measurements. Take another picture like at the end of every week. So let's do this every Wednesday, right? We're going to yeah. live stream with Bronson every Wednesday. So every Wednesday, I want you to take a picture of yourself or have mm -hmm. somebody take a picture of yourself and also take your measurements. Do it every Wednesday. At the end of the month, do all of that again and then get on the scale. And if you have access to like a body fat scale, even, even better. better. Because you're going to probably see that even if the scale weight goes up, everything else is gonna go down. You may go up in lean muscle mass, but you're probably gonna go down in fat. You're gonna get looser clothes. And believe me, I'm experiencing this, but if you get on that scale and you're building muscle, you're going to get so upset when you see a pound up. But the bottom line is, you know what? The rock doesn't weigh nothing. Exactly, so so do us a favor. If you need to a reason to do it, do it because you love me. Right. Stay off of your scale for the month of April, no joke. Take those measurements, take those pictures, just like Joe is saying, share them mm -hmm. if you need to. Like, hey, I just need somebody to see what's going on. Like share them in our Facebook family group and you're gonna be happy you did. And also at the end of the month, we're gonna be doing some giveaways as part of the No Joke Challenge from some company sponsors like Redmond Real Salt yeah. and Keto Chow and Keto Brick and I believe we may have a couple things from Perfect Keto and we may have a couple of things from Equip. So, and I'm working on a few more, but uh, yeah, so we're gonna be doing some giveaways as part of this challenge. You're definitely gonna to wanna to be participating. Yeah. Okay, uh, next up is from Debbie. Hey Debbie. She says, so when calculating protein grams, do you use the before you cook it weight or the after you cook it weight? Okay, so I'm glad that you asked this question because I think a lot of people are confused. When you look at the grams of protein, we are not talking about the weight of the food. So for example, if you take a chicken breast and you weigh it out and it, let's say it weighs 10 ounces, that it's, you're not looking at grams of protein for that. What you need to do is go into chronometer and put in 10 ounces of chicken and that will tell you how many grams of protein are in there because it's not the same. That 10 ounces of chicken is including the protein, the fat, and the water in there. The grams of protein will not change when you cook it, so it yeah. doesn't matter. What will change is the weight of that chicken because you may be cooking off water. Same thing with ground beef. When you cook ground beef, unless you're like sucking up all that fat again, 
a pound of ground beef, like pre-cooked, is not a pound of ground beef like when it is cooked. Right. But the protein will not go away. You're not going to lose any protein. That should tell you something, right? You don't lose any of the protein. So you really want to put everything into chronometer. It's not the weight of the food. It's how many grams of protein. For example, we use this all the time. A 20 ounce prime rib has 150 grams of protein and about 150 grams of fat. Right. Plus there's water in there as well. So it's not the weight of the food, it's how much protein is within that food. And if you're entering it into chronometer, check to see, does it say cooked or raw yeah. on there? Now, overall though, it doesn't really matter because again, the protein's not gonna go down. But if you're tracking for other stuff, like you wanna know how much fat, the best thing to do is just be consistent. Like if like you can, you'll find that like a pound of ground beef, you can put like, I have a pound of raw ground beef and then you cook it. And then you can also weigh out how much is this now and cooked. It will be the same. You can go find like cooked or pans browned brown beef mm -hmm. and you're gonna see it comes out to be about the same, but you just have to be consistent and always choose the same kind. Don't just use ground beef, use 90-10 ground beef. Or right. 85-15 ground beef. Okay, next one is from Francine. Hey Francine, she says, help. So I know for the easy method to determine your protein intake to use your goal weight, what if you are at your goal? Do you then move um, to LBM or do you keep the same one-to-one -one ratio on that number? For example, I am 5'8 and a half, <laughs> 138 pounds. So round to 140, do I keep my macros at 140 grams of protein, 120 grams of fat and 20 carbs? Or do I use the LBM and adjust? My goal is recomposition. Everywhere but my stomach area is fairly lean and would like to tone up and all my excess fluff is in my midsection where there is some loose skin issues where the fat just won't leave. I'm so confused, but very likely overcomplicating it. Thanks in advance. Okay, I'm gonna actually leave this up so I can answer some of it. Now, again, this is a great question to ask Bronson during one of the live streams. I'm gonna tell you my opinion and everything that I know from what I've studied in research, which reminds me, we are not doctors or health no. professionals or nurses or anything like that. It's all based on our studying and our own research and experiments on ourselves. But first of all, we can't control where the fat comes from. I wish we could, but me too. we can't. Uh, but if you start, keep going and building up some of that muscle, that'll help get rid of the fat and you can tone up your stomach and things like that. Um, but when it comes to, if you're trying to just maintain, if you were to go to using your lean body mass, that would actually be lowering how much you're taking in. So I would kind of, you're gonna have to kind of play this as a trial and error. So if you are still losing weight with eating a one-to-one -one based on your goal weight, you may need to up your fat a little bit. I wouldn't up it too much, up it just like a few grams, like maybe, you know, 25 to 50 calories worth, so maybe like an extra five grams or so. See how that goes for a couple of weeks or and then keep going until you actually maintain, like kind of like reverse dieting. You're just gonna add in a little bit until you get to that threshold. Like that's one of the things that Robert talks about, right? So when you work on his deeper state keto program, he reverses you back up and you find that threshold where now you're maintaining and that's your threshold. For him, it's about 80% fat. When you're trying to lose weight, we don't need all of that fat, but you may need to add a little bit back on. Now you can also eat more protein, but that's not your calories. Your calories and your energy is gonna come from the fat and the carbohydrates. So maybe increase just a little bit. And if you're gonna try to build muscle, you're probably gonna wanna increase your protein even more. Right. Okay, next one is from Terry. Hey, Terry. Terry said, help. I've been on keto for four months and I was pretty successful with my weight loss for the first two months. Then my weight loss went from a pound or two a week to a pound if I'm lucky, and now in a month, four. I'm lucky to lose two to four ounces, maybe six ounces every two weeks. I'm feeling so frustrated because this diet is so restrictive and I'm ready to give up. Oh no. I was dealing with all the restrictions in meal planning, but I was seeing the weight loss, but now not so much. Any suggestions? Well, my biggest suggestion is don't stop eating this keto way of life because there's so much to, to gain from it than just the weight loss. Now, here's the thing. You're going by the scale and again, 
get off the scale. The scale is the devil. Go by, the scale is one number that does not tell you the whole picture. Believe me, I mean, I'm at my heaviest weight, but my size is going down. And it's frustrating to see the number on the scale go up, but yeah. I have to look at the overall picture. Right. You need to be getting on and measuring yourself and taking pictures and judging yourself by like how your clothes fit. Rachel just made a comment the other day. She was like, I don't like the number on the scale, but my clothes are looser than they've ever been. Well, and because we have a scale that breaks out the bigger picture, I can see that I've gained a tremendous amount of lean muscle and I've lost a bunch of body fat, mm -hmm. which has been very encouraging. But if you don't have a scale that's breaking that off and you're just seeing that number, yeah, I can totally see why someone would wanna throw in the towel. Yeah, so just make sure you're like judging the whole picture, not just that number. At one point, Rachel lost only two pounds, but dropped like three sizes. Yeah. So you have to remember all that. Now, as far as being restrictive, funny you should mention that, but make sure that you hit the bell notification because later on in this week, we actually have a video coming out about this diet or this lifestyle being restrictive. And I think you will definitely benefit from that. Yeah. Because personally, I don't think it's a restrictive diet. I mean, are you looking at, I can't have this? Instead of looking at, I can't have this, let's look at, I can have this. And yeah. I think that will really help your mindset. I hope so. Uh, next one is from Cynthia. Hey, Cynthia. She says, I'm curious how people plan to do pull-ups without a pull-up bar. Okay, so Bronson actually has on the like PDF, you, there's all kinds of alternate things. And also you can always message him. You can Google like alternatives to this. There's a lot of different things. Like one of the things I had actually said the same thing to him, like I don't have a pull-up bar. And he was like, one of the things you can do is like, get a piece of PVC pipe and I can, you can put some resistance bands and kind of like do that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there are some different alternatives. Also, I noticed a bunch of people saying they were having trouble with the PDF and the linking to the videos. If you are having that problem, make sure you let us know or let Bronson know. Sometimes it comes to the way you download it. Okay? Yeah. Because it needs to, you can't just snap a picture. You actually have to download it so that the links are still clickable. Right. Uh, next one is from Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Jamie said, my favorite trick to bring deviled eggs to a party. Okay, yes. What are those again? Uh, put the yolks and the mayo in a Ziploc bag. Oh. Then you can mash it all together by squishing it. Oh, Ooh, That wow. would just be fun, like kind of like a stress ball. Seriously. When you get to your venue, cut the corner off the bag, pipe it into the whites. No dishes, no mess, and no expensive deviled egg tray. What a brilliant idea. That is I awesome. I love that. That is really something, I mean, even without a party, if you're just going to work, that would be a lot easier to transport it. I think about like those deviled egg trays. For me, it's not even the expense of the deviled egg trays. It's like, how often do you use it? And now where do you, it's another thing to store in your cabinet that you use like once a year. Well, what, what stresses me out is not just like you're saying, not the expense of that egg tray, because I've found some at like the Dollar Tree, but it's not going to arrive at my destination pretty like i want it to get there pretty even at work and if it's just for me i want my deviled eggs to be pretty and it's going to be all jostled right. around right uh next one is from miranda hey miranda she says sugar addiction is real i keep telling myself just for today you are not going to eat junk food today is one of those days that i'm struggling to stay on track i want all the sweets Okay, yeah, I, I firmly believe that sugar is like the most addictive substance on earth. It is, we're all addicted to it. And the worst part is, is we get addicted to it almost as soon as we're born because a lot of times the hospitals immediately put sugar in our mouth to get us to not cry or to get good pictures taken. And it, it's just a shame and it's it's a hard struggle, but you've got this. Yes. One of the things I'm gonna suggest to you, if you're having like a sweet craving day, try eating some salt. Get a Redmond salt lick, uh, put a little bit of Redmond salt on your hand and kind of lick it. Your favorite thing now is actually using Redmond Relight sticks. Yes, oh my goodness. I love those because it's almost like a pixie stick. Yeah. Because it's a flavoring, it's sweet, and then, you know, I know that it's doing something good for me. So I will I will utilize those as just kind of like, you know, get me out of wanting to have something sweet. I like what you're saying too about just for today. Right. Keeping things in perspective that is just a 24 hour cycle. It's too difficult to to say, I'm never going to, to do this. I'm never going to have this. Just stay within that 24 hour cycle. Also, 
think to yourself, what is a good reward for you? So maybe in you know, 24 hours, you, you're using a planner and you give yourself a sticker or for the 24 hours that you are good, you pay yourself a dollar, whatever it is that you need to do to keep yourself on track within a 24 hour period. Like if I, you know, if I do this, I will, you know, make a phone call to somebody I love hearing from, or I will watch a certain Netflix show, whatever mm -hmm. it is to reward yourself for staying true to the 24 hours. I think it'll be a blessing for you. I love that. Yeah, but there's lots of different little hacks. Definitely try the Redmond thing. I know it's definitely changed things for Rachel. Yeah. And also the Redmond Relight Sticks, we have a link down below that'll get you 15% off. They only had the berry and the lemon lime. I know you're not a big berry fan. I love the lemon lime though. But the lemon lime you love. They only had that in the sticks and now all of the flavors are available in the sticks. Like and they're colada. great because you can just put them in your purse, put them in your pocket. I keep some in the car. So it's nice to have some electrolytes if you're just all of a sudden feeling dehydrated, you can grab a 16 ounce bottle of water, but also, you can just always have this little bit of like a pixie stick to bring with you. Well, I think pina colada is the best. I think it's good too. A another thing I do when you have like the bigger containers before they came out with the pixie sticks for like pina colada is I'll just take a scoop and put it into what would be a, a sauce dipping cup mm -hmm. that we've previously used. And that way I know I'm just getting a serving. I'm not trying right. to eat the entire container, but like just a serving of it. And that's like the equivalent of a pixie stick. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Bruce. Hey, Bruce. Bruce said, non-scale victory of the day. I got out of my car at the grocery store and I almost lost my oh. pants. <laughs> I had to tighten them up a notch to a hole that I never used before. Bruce, that is an awesome win. I can remember a couple times going out with Joe and being like, yo, you need to like. Oh, yeah, you're walking down the street. Pick up those pants because we're not trying to like, you know do the, the plumber crack thing in front Pre of everybody. Pre-keto, I never wore a belt because I didn't need one. My pants were always like, you know, leaving that line across yeah. your stomach because like, I'm not going up to a 46. I'm just not going to a 46. So you take where you're supposed to be wearing a 46 and I'm wearing a 42 and you're squeezing. Come on, we all know what it's right, suck it in. Yeah. But now at the end of the day, you've got that red line across. My stomach held my pants up. Let's just, let's just say it. Now I have to wear a belt or my shorts are falling off. Right. And when we went on the water and the keys, I was so terrified because I'm wearing what Rachel calls ball shorts. Yes. And like, she's like, every time you get up on that thing, I'm afraid your pants are going to come down because I can't tighten the rope tight enough. Well, and I think that your swim trunks and bathing suits are probably the last thing that you replace because you're like, I don't use them, don't use them that often. so often that I need to replace those. But here's a public service announcement for ladies and gentlemen, get a new bathing suit for every single year because yeah, there's a lot that changes. And when we go back to when you say like, wow, I, you know, I wish I could decide where the fat comes off. One of the first places for the ladies whether we like it or not, is in our, our, our chesticles here. So like, um, yeah, if you don't get a new bathing suit and the water hits you if you're at the beach, you're gonna be super embarrassed because yeah, there's not as much up there as there used to be. Uh, next one is from Rob Knott. Hey, Rob Knott says, so at work we were talking about food. Oh, I love Big Macs. That's what the co-workers co-work were saying. After I said, that is garbage, they asked, what is a treat for me? And I said, wild salmon that I have every week. And they said, wow, must be nice to be rich. So my six to $8 piece of fish I have every week is more expensive than the $12, three to four times a week garbage food. This is a classic example of how people's thinking is so off. Yeah. It is so true. People will say a lot of time, like, how do you afford the better eggs? When right. you start not getting like all of the carby foods, you realize like your food budget is like lower. You're like, you're not spending enough. But it's funny, we were just in the Keys this past week and we actually filmed the video over on our camping channel about saving money so that we can actually go camping every other week and what our budgets are and how we do it and you know, like where we get our money for food and things like that. But as we were having that nice fish meal, I was sitting down with Rachel and we were talking about, okay, so here's what we had and we'll, we'll lay it out there. We had a pound of stone crab, uh, stone crab claws, which right. was $20. Mm -hmm. Then we got a pound of fresh Florida Gulf Coast shrimp, which was like $13. Yeah. And then we also had, we each had a giant yellowfin tuna filet, which I want to say it was like $15 per pound. Mm -hmm. 
in all, we had we spent I think the whole total was like forty three dollars or something like that for everything that we had. How much would it have cost for us to go out to eat for that meal? A lot, right? A lot. We had fresh fish. Now, a lot of times our meals cost three or four dollars because we eat a pound of ground beef at two dollars and thirty nine cents a pound. So, the each of us eat a pound of ground beef. It costs us, you know, like five bucks. So sometimes it's low and sometimes it's high, but. How much does it cost to go to McDonald's? I think, you know, unless you're going on the dollar menu, and let's face it, like, you don't get much food for that. No. A Big Mac meal is like 6 $7. Yeah, well, and something that's interesting that we're starting to see is as more restaurants are just so thankful for business yep. that they're catering, you know, more to whatever your dietary needs are, we're noticing that a lot of restaurants will do a la carte for the protein. Yes. So go ahead and ask them and say like, I don't want the meal because you know what I mean? Like if you're in somewhere and they're selling a hamburger and you say, look, I really just want the burger patty with some toppings on it. I don't want to substitute anything like a salad or fries. Would you just sell me the hamburger, you know, this way? We're finding that more people will sell it to us. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. Like you go out for barbecue and you're just getting that half pound of brisket or, you know, quarter of a chicken, that is going to be way less expensive than getting the meal. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Carrie. Hey, Carrie. Carrie said, if you are willing to share, what are some additional benefits that you get from living a ketogenic lifestyle beyond the weight loss? I would love to hear. I thought this was a great thing. So yeah. let us know down below in the comments section, what have you experienced other than weight loss on keto? For me, it's mobility. I mean, there's a lot of things, but when, if you looked at like, what is the one thing I'm appreciative on keto other than the weight loss, it's mobility. When I look at three years ago, I was looking at having to get an ankle replacement surgery, spending a year off my feet, not being able to work because at the time, my only income was officiating and landscaping, both of which require me to walk a lot yeah. and run. When I look at having to always be in a wheelchair when I went to the theme parks, when I look at $150 a month on arthritis medication, which did not make me feel good, would usually bloat me up, would usually make me feel loopy. I'm appreciative for the mobility that I gained from keto. Well, and I'm really thankful for that too, because I love you. And I like the fact that we have a good future ahead of us now. And so we can play, plan for more activity, not less activity. But for me, I mean, I've had so many different things happen, you know, no, no more inflammation, no more joint pain, no more carpal tunnel, no more headaches. Um, my skin has cleared up. I see elasticity returning to my skin. That's been great. But I have to say, if I have to choose only only one thing that I love the most, it would have to be how keto has spoken to my depression and anxiety, because that's something that I have dealt with lifelong issue. And I love the fact that I feel good. I am not anxious and it has really spoken to my depression. That's really good. Okay. Next one is from Jenia. Hey, Jenia. She said, with the goal of increasing my protein, can you recommend a clean protein powder to add to keto chow? I'm traveling soon, so I prefer something that I can get locally at a grocery store, a pharmacy, or a health food store for now. I can order online next time. Thanks all. Um, as far as in the store, the only one that I would recommend is probably IsoPure. Yeah. A lot of the ones have a bunch of stuff that I'm not really keen on them adding into products. Like things like Quest, I mean, they taste delicious, but there's some extra sweeteners and some chemicals that I don't like. IsoPure is pretty clean protein powder. I would highly suggest they're trying to stock up on some Equip protein powder because it is a beef protein. Um, I don't think you necessarily want to add a whole bunch of like um, milk protein isolates to keto chow. So trying to find like a beef protein would be really good. So you can get the equip if you can get it like and bring it with you. Well, and something I would definitely recommend is as we're seeing more of these things, you know, you can go to Ross or TJ mm -hmm. Maxx and, and start and start seeing like, you know, protein powder really look and make sure that they are showing you what all of the ingredients are. Sometimes they'll they'll list like, oh, here's the vitamins that are in here, but they're not breaking down exactly what the ingredients are, what the sweetener is, where the flavoring's coming from. And I think that uh, you can really derail stuff, you know, your plans, because you're not looking at the full breakdown of ingredients. That's a really good point. In fact, I was watching recently a 
another YouTuber on keto and they were talking about like, this is a really good protein powder. You know, there's no bad ingredients in it. And I've looked it up. I'm like, okay, I'm always looking like, is yeah. there something is better there something out else? there? Right. And I'm looking on the label and they are listing all of the different like amino acids and everything on there. And they're giving you the nutrition and nowhere on there, nowhere on there does it have a list of ingredients. It doesn't say what it's bound to. It doesn't say if it's got any fiber. It doesn't say if it's got a sweetener. At, and it, and by the way, it wasn't unflavored. So right. So there's it was something chocolate in there. flavored. So there's got to be some cocoa powder in there. So to me, my personal opinion, you can do what you want. If I don't care what it is, if the product does not have a list of ingredients, whether or not it is a nutritional supplement, and they don't have to tell you, I will not purchase it. One of the things with Equip, when we started working with them, I had a whole list of questions for Dr. Yeah. Anthony because I picked up the package of strawberry and I'm like, okay. The ingredients are really good, but why do I not see on this label any place where it has carbohydrates? You have the protein, you have the fat, but you don't even have a line for carbohydrates. What's with that? And it wasn't until he explained it to me that I'm like, okay, I get it. And he's like, but we are changing that. We put it on the website and the new bags will have carbohydrates there. But I want you to be clear. We, we've had that with like Crave Bakery. We think they make a great product. And I, what did we say to them in the video? You need to fix your label. I, if your label is deceiving, I won't promote you. I won't eat you. And I won't tell anybody else. <laughs> I'm not going to eat you. But I'm you know what I'm saying, man. right? Yeah. Like I want you to be upfront and honest with something. And if you're not upfront and honest, I feel like you're hiding something. So really need to look at everything you're putting in your mouth. If they're not going to tell you what's in it, don't eat it. Right. I think we have one more, and that is from Amy. Hey, Amy. Amy said, if anyone remembers my post from last week about the scale not moving, but my jeans out of the dryer fitting, I have an update. Yay! The scale still hasn't moved, but this morning I grabbed a pair of jeans from my closet that is one size smaller than I've been wearing. I held them up and thought, nope, there is no way this butt is going to fit into <laughs> these jeans. I decided to try for g grins and giggles, and not only do they fit, but they are slightly big. Wow. No jumping on the bed to fasten them or anything. Such a great non-scale victory. Amy, that is such an awesome thing, and thank you so much for not keeping that to yourself, because people need to hear that. Like, if they get on the scale and they're like, okay, another week that I haven't seen the scale move, there's just no way there's any progress going, and you're proving that what we say all the time, which is just because the scale doesn't move does not mean that stuff is not happening yeah. because things are happening. That is so awesome. awesome. Now that is going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. And we really appreciate everybody joining with us, especially if you were participating in the premiere chat. Thanks for spending Monday. Now, again, if you like seeing videos like this, we have lots of other videos, but we also want to remind you, don't forget this Wednesday is the live stream with Bronson. Bring your questions. It's at 6 p.m. Eastern time right here on our channel so make sure you're hitting that bell button to be notified when we go live also on thursday we have our regular weekly live stream at 8 30 p.m eastern time and if you're new to our channel by the way our thursday live stream is kind of just a fun night yeah if you have keto questions feel free to ask them and so long as we see them in the chat we will answer them or somebody will answer them but it's really our night to just kind of get together with the community and let the conversation go where it may yeah we don't want people to think they're they're entering a, a you know a medical meetup and then be disappointed because we're talking about you know balls <laughs> Now, again, guys, please, if you want to support our channel, use some of the links down below. That's what supports the channel. Make sure you visit the sponsors who help support us. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, we have 106 other Keto on the Couches, which I'm going to link right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.